Welcome back everybody. We have a new version of Angular, Angular version 16. I have the Angular blog right here. What I want to do today is just go through the whole blog, talk you guys through all the new changes, all the new updates coming in. So for those of you that maybe don't want to go through and read about all the updates, you guys can just watch this video and I'm going to tell you guys why things are important, why you should care about some things and kind of touch on the also little nice to have updates. But let's dive into the blog. So as we scroll down a little bit, we start seeing the word reactivity. Uh, and this is basically the biggest kind of new change or update to Angular version 16. And that is we're diving into Angular signals. It's basically Angular giving us the ability to have more reactive apps. Uh, it's basically a better version of change detection as well as a more manual version of change detection that can be shared throughout components without needing an observable or a subscription. And don't worry, guys, I'll show you guys a few examples uh, from another blog that I found that was really good about explaining to me um, kind of everything about why this is kind of cool and important and why you should care. And the reason it's called a signal is because when this variable is basically created um, and something happens to it, it's manipulated, its value is changed, something about it changes, it basically sends out a signal to everywhere else in your application that that is waiting on that signal and updates that value everywhere. And you know that it's going to happen at that moment always. And I don't know about you guys that have also worked kind of with the change detection stuff. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Sometimes it isn't as fluid as we'd like it to be and fails in certain scenarios. And I know it's been a pain point to me in a few different applications that I've worked with. Um, so I kind of really like and I'm interested in using signals and I probably might start working with them soon. They are in developer preview, so things might continue to change. But they are exciting and I really like them. And this is why I think now we're going to move into some of the examples that I saw. And we can kind of explain to you guys uh, why I think they're a really cool step forward for Angular. So moving over to this article that I found from Free Code Camp, uh, it did a really good job of explaining signals to me and why I think it's actually going to be pretty cool to use. Uh, so right here, like we said, we know uh, variable X, Y, and then you obviously add them. Your value Z is going to have eight, right? Uh, so moving down here. Now in this example, so again, same thing, we're going to get a value of eight. They update X. Obviously they don't update Z again. So the value of Z, you know, is still eight. But if we had signals, this would change. Why would it change? Because if this X was a signal, once X's value got updated, Z would automatically get updated. And let's see kind of how that changes. So now coming down here, they've changed all that code to use signal. So now X is a signal, so is Y. So then whenever you compute them and add them together, you again get eight. But when you set X now, it sends out a signal to update X everywhere, which updates this, and now you get a different value. So like I said, this was just a quick little example of how your code can be a little bit more reactive and give you a little bit better control over how change detection works because you're manually doing it more than kind of Angular having to infer it on its own. And just to go through a few more things to explain what is a signal, it's a variable and a change notification. It is reactive, it has a value, and is synchronous. And it is not a replacement for RxJS and observables. And we can really use signals anywhere in our application. And they can be passed around, they can be in different components, they work all the same. Scrolling down a little bit more, you can see kind of how you create signals. You can create individual signals with arrays, with objects, object arrays. You can create signals of all of them, so for whatever you need, you, you can you can create it with signals. So if you thought maybe it was only for like very basic data types, no, you can do it for just about anything you really want. And there are three different ways that you can kind of update the values of the variables. And that is basically going to be set, update and mutate. You know, set's going to replace a value with a new value. As you can see right here, update updates the signal based on the current values. And you can also do arrow functions in there. And finally, you have the mutate method, which modifies the content of a signal value, not the signal value itself. And you can see an example of them doing it right here as well. And as you guys saw in the earlier example, you can also compute new signals based on other signals. And that's how you do this one right here. But now to kind of wrap up signals, basically the best time to use them is when there's a lot of calculations or changing in the data of a certain component. That's kind of where signals are going to be probably used the best. And if you're finding this video helpful, please drop a like on it so it can spread to more developers on YouTube. Thank you. So why is server-side rendering and hydration important? Well, they finally finished a developer preview of their full app non-destructive hydration. But what does this even mean? It basically means that there's been huge improvements for anyone that uses server-side rendering on their app already. They are now putting out a full developer preview for it. 
Hydration is basically the process of restoring the application on the client side using the DOM structures. So any Angular app that is rendering server side and then that content is sent to the browser, it will now try and reuse as much of the app structure instead of just re-rendering it and destroying it, which is basically why it's called non-destructive hydration instead of being called D destructive hydration, right? So non-destructive, basically it tries to reuse as much as the app structure so that you don't have kind of the flickering, which is kind of this benefit uh, that they talk about right here because they're not destroying everything. They're trying to reuse as much as possible, which improves that issue of the flickering as well as it helps with SEO performance. And it's as easy as just adding a few lines as they put down here uh, and it improves the performance of your app. So you just have to add these lines right here uh, and you can start messing around with that right now. And if you guys want more information about server-side rendering, uh, I'll put a link in the description to a really helpful YouTube video that I found that covers everything that you need to know about this new update and these new changes. And next thing, we have more improvements for standalone components. Like I've been saying since I made this video that's up here somewhere uh, about the future of Angular, standalone components are the future of how Angular wants you to create components. So in this update, they are giving you a migration guide for your traditional components. So this command down here will basically change all your components uh, and try and update them as best as possible and do all the changes like getting rid of ng module files and stuff of that nature. Uh, and if you go down here, you can also now create a project basically from the start with only standalone in mind, basically getting rid of all the ng module files. And basically you're now starting from that point instead of kind of building from the traditional standpoint and traditional components and then adding on new standalones, you now are starting with only standalones kind of in mind. So like I said, guys, I think standalone components are going to continue to be the future. And if you guys want more information on standalone components, like I said, go check out my video uh, in the description or up at the top. Another thing that Angular is working with is dabbling with Vite, I believe that's how it's pronounced, for development servers and then ES build for production builds. And they're basically just trying to improve that side of, you know, doing production builds and all of that jazz. Uh, really something that I don't think is super important for us just typical Angular developers to know. But it is good that they are continuing to improve things. But now something that is a little bit more important for the majority of us, uh, and that is doing unit tests for those of you that actually do unit tests, right? Um, and basically, they are trying to just add the ability to use Jest, which, as we know, is a very good testing framework that hopefully they can get you know, very integrated with Angular because it would be awesome, uh, but it is still in a very experimental phase. But they basically said that they are going to continue to try and integrate this framework and hopefully down the line, we can have a full fledged ability to use Jest with our applications. But right now, if you want to dabble with it, you can go ahead and do it. It's just very experimental and maybe some things change going forward. And now kind of the stuff to come from here are all just very small tweaks. The first is kind of a nice to have feature, which is just allowing you to, you know, set an input as required, you know, kind of nice, right? Uh, moving down here, passing router data as component inputs. Basically here, you can just bind uh, values to component inputs uh, that are coming from the route values. So basically just right here, routes, uh, and you can set that value as coming from the route. And then basically everything that's right here is for content security policy purposes. They added the ability to add nonce through the ng CSP nonce attribute uh, right here or the CSP nonce injection token, which is down here. And that's basically all you need to know about that. Next is ng on destroy. Uh, just again, adding to the flexibility of it all. And you can basically inject it anywhere you want and register the on destroy lifecycle hook and clean up whatever you need. And something down here that I actually found to be kind of fun and kind of nice and good to have is being able to have self-closing tags for components. So that's just kind of nice to not need to have, you know, double component tag. It just, just, just ends. That just, it just makes sense. It's one of those things that's just kind of common sense. It just, it just makes sense. Um, and then finally, they basically just kind of saying uh, some short things about Angular material and accessibility going forward and that they obviously have much more to come because we get these updates, you know, every six months or whatever. Um, and then they just kind of end with some community spotlight and stuff of that nature. So what do you guys think of Angular 16? Let me know in the comments section. And if you want to learn how to integrate Google login into your Angular application, watch this video right now.